I would like to welcome you to this channel. This is the Jewels and Pearls Ladies channel. It's good to have you back. Um, we started a series on virginity in the last video. So today I'm going to continue on that series. In the last video, I talked about um, what virginity is and how girls lose their virginity. And because the focus of this channel is to talk to young girls, so you may find me continually referring to girls instead of boys. But all in all, we all know that God expects us to keep our bodies until marriage, whether we are a boy or a girl. So now, today I'm going to be talking about consequences of losing one's virginity before marriage. The consequences and what it all entails. Now, it's, it's not exhaustive, but I've identified about seven consequences that I would like to, like to quickly share with you. Number one, when a girl loses her virginity before marriage, there is this uncertainty and emptiness. When she loses her virginity before marriage, she's not sure if this person who has had, she has had this sexual experience with will always be there for her. She's not sure if this person is her person. She's not sure if this person is going to sleep around with other girls. She, there's this uncertainty and there's also this emptiness feeling like I've lost something precious. I wish I didn't do it. There's always that nagging fear. Yes, I know girls brag. Some will brag and say, oh, I've done it and there's nothing about it. But really and truly, I'm sure when they sit down quietly with themselves, they can admit at least to themselves that it is something they wouldn't have done if they thought well about it. I'm sure they have some regrets. I'm sure they have some regrets. And for those that don't even have regrets at that moment, probably in the future, they may have regrets. Now, that emptiness and uncertainty can only come when there's no cover of marriage. Now, that's why I'm going to explain what I mentioned in the first episode when I said God wants to protect us. That's the reason why God says wait till marriage. When God is saying you should not touch sex until marriage, it's not a punishment. No, it's a protection plan. It's a protection plan of God. So God doesn't want you to suffer that uncertainty, that emptiness, that unworthiness that happens when someone has sex with a stranger or someone that's not their spouse. God doesn't want you to experience that. So he says, wait until marriage because when you are married that's the cover of marriage and the covenant of marriage binds you and that person together so you're not uncertain if you are for that person no you are certain you are for that person and that person is for you you're not you don't feel empty because you know you have given it to the your own person to the person that's for you so no uncertainty no emptiness because you done it in the place of marriage but when it's outside there's definitely uncertainty and emptiness so that's my number one point number two is sexually transmitted diseases and infections we all know this i mean when girls begin to engage in um, premarital sex that sex before marriage they are prone they are exposed to sexually transmitted diseases gonorrhea syphilis you name it so many and it's been proven that that's the leading cause of infertility in women in their later years when this young girl has grown up and that infection or disease was not properly treated when she was a teenager or a very young adult so many years ago when now she's in her 30s married she finds it hard to conceive because of that decision that was made many years ago. So premarital sex has dire consequences that you don't want to even touch. You don't even want to experience. So that's why it's so important that we wait till marriage, at least to avoid sexually transmitted diseases and infections. So that's my number two. Quickly, number three, it's pregnancy. Pregnancy can result from a sexual encounter. 
A guy can do it and walk away, but it's not the same for a girl. It is not the same. A girl can have sex with a boy one time and she gets pregnant. So what happens? Let's say she's in her final year in school or she's in her first year in school, whatever year she is in school, there's definitely going to be a disruption. Now she begins to think, ah, what do I do? Should I abort or should I keep? All those complications would not happen if she did not sleep with a guy. So that's another consequence of premarital sex, having sex before marriage. There can be pregnancy. Okay, that's my number three points. Going quickly to number four is the lack of trust. Once a girl begins to sleep with a guy that's not her husband, there's a lack of trust. Remember, there's no cover of marriage. So even though she has had that encounter with him, she's not. she doesn't trust him. He's not trustworthy. She begins to think at the back of her mind, who is he with now? When he's not around me, who has he slept with in the last one week? Or if you find if she finds him with a guy, with a girl walking around or studying together, there's just this fear, there's just this worry. What if he's going to sleep with her? What if this? What that insecurity, that lack of trust is as a result of giving her body over to him. I once heard someone say something which I quite agree. He said when a girl and a guy breaks up their relationship watch how that girl, girl mourns for that relationship if she mourns as if something died it is very clear she slept with him but if she did not sleep with him she may cry for a day or two and just dust it off her shoulders and move on because she did not commit her body to that guy so it's so important that there's, there's no lack of trust. And that means that a girl must keep her body till the point of marriage, till when she's married. So you don't have to encounter lack of trust. Now, that's my number four point. Going quickly to number five, people that have had sexual experiences before marriage, usually they have a skewed way of seeing people. I mean, a, a guy can be walking towards them and they're evaluating his physique. Even though he's properly dressed, they, are, they can all already see his physique as, as though he's naked. They begin to look at people as though they are naked because they've had that, that experience, that exposure. They are so, um, their antennas are so high up there concerning sexuality, a person's body, and we need to think about what the person's body will look like or feel like. It's a skewed way of seeing people, and that's completely wrong. People are beyond their physical appearances. People are way more than their physical appearance, and that's a consequence of having premarital sex. Number six is choosing sexuality over personality. People that have been exposed to premarital sex most likely will always choose person, um, sexuality over personality. That means no matter how wonderful a person is, they will always want to know what is their sexual um, um, activity like. Are, are, they, are they strong sexually? Are they good in bed? When people begin to ask such questions or begin to ponder on such questions, you must know that that person has been exposed to premarital sex. That's not normal. In talking with someone, in having a good conversation with someone, that shouldn't be coming into a person's mind normally. Okay, so that's number six. Now, quickly, or to number seven, the seventh consequence of um, premarital sex is basing love on sexual activity. That means a girl sleeps with a boy and she thinks that the boy loves her. No. Love is in action. It's not necessarily sex. Love and sex are two different things. They are not the same. Especially for a man, they are completely different. So a girl must know that love and sex are two different things. You cannot equate them together. They are different. They are not necessarily the same. So these are the consequences of um, premarital sex. It breeds 
let's quickly run through them it breeds uncertainty and um, emptiness it could it exposes the girl to sexually transmitted disease and infection number three can lead to pregnancy number four there's lack of trust number five gives her a skewed way of looking at people number six makes her choose sexuality over personality and number seven makes her base love on sexual activity and that is just not right so i'd like to encourage you hearing these consequences do you think it's worth it i don't think so why not wait enjoy your life doing the right thing occupy your mind rightly and wait till marriage and have a good sexual experience i hope you've enjoyed this session I look forward to seeing you in my next video, still on this series of virginity. Thank you for watching this video. I'm grateful. I'd like you to subscribe, like, share, and leave a comment for us in the comment section below. Thank you. See you in my next video. Bye.